brought a new dimension to Indian batsmanship. He played both fast and slow bowling with consummate skill. He was a shrewd and thoughtful captain. The master craftsman, Sunil Gavaskar, is one of ESPN's legends of cricket. his 200 super innings. The Oval, 1979. Sunil Gavaskar scored one of the greatest centuries of modern times, a chanceless and error-free 221 in just over eight hours. Magnificent performance for this fine batsman. Well, uh, it's one of the greatest innings that he's played and it was a vintage Gavaskar on display, uh, just playing swing bowling to perfection, taking his time initially and then just opening up and branching out the shots. Nothing in the air, everything very, very copybook. I remember I watched that inning and I just uh, remember being stunned by the greatness of the man. Standing just 163 centimeters or five feet four, Gavaskar built his game around a compact defense and the discipline to take only calculated risks. Now there's a chap who had uh, an insatiable appetite for runs, uh, but he scored them in uh, attractive fashion. Well, Sunil Gavaskar is one of the great players the world's ever seen. He's great rather than very good. Not much of him, but he had uh, a close to perfect technique. Sonny uh, is probably one of the best players of fast bowling that, that I played against. Um, his record is, um, is sensational and uh, you know, he played in the era when there were a lot of fast bowlers around. Um, and he did it with, um, with style and grace and um, with, a, with a great determination. Uh, he was someone also whose uh, mental abilities matched his, his physical abilities. If you were picking a team to play against the great West Indian sides of the 70s and 80s, the first player you would pick would be Sonny Gavaskar, because most, quite a lot of batsmen of that, of that era wilted against the, the formidable pace attack of the West Indians, and Gavaskar just got better. I think he was technically very sound. He would, you know, smell the ball when he was playing, and uh, coming from an opening batsman, the way he used to play, play the ball close to the body, you can't expect anything more from an opening batsman and I think that is one reason why he was a great player. You know, I was an opening batsman and, and I enjoyed watching fellow opening batsmen and he was the one I enjoyed the most. I think he was the most balanced player I've ever seen. Uh, he was a beautiful player of fast bowling and his record against the West Indies is testament to that. Um, he's just so well balanced and because of that he was, not only was he in the correct position to play his shots but he was also in the correct position to leave a ball and particularly against top fast bowling, that's one of the skills that you really need. So I, I thought he was just the, the uh, complete opener. Gavaskar's captaincy showed the same determination with which he opened the batting. He was an inspiration and role model to younger players in the side. For me, what uh, stood out about Sonny was he was a fantastic role model and that was tremendously comforting to the dressing room. It was just that kind of an individual. He was mentally very strong. He was that positive uh, in his mindset that uh, he knew that it was just a matter of time. If he could see the first half an hour or so through, he could get a big score. He had a good cricketing mind. That's how he developed as a great player. Also, he knew how to relate to different kinds of people in the team. I think it's very important for an Indian captain and captains of the subcontinent to be, uh, you know, to learn the emotional chords of the players because we tend to be very emotional people and it affects a lot of our performances. So if you have a leader who understands the minds of the team, Sunil Gavaskar was the best Indian captain for me. Sunil Gavaskar was raised in the cricket-mad city of Mumbai and naturally gravitated to the game. 
I think it was easy uh, in in Mumbai because Mumbai is a cricket mad uh, city. So it was easy for a youngster to uh, to pick up uh, a bat and uh, and play cricket. Also the fact that my maternal uncle, my mother's elder brother Madhav Mantri played for India uh, in a few test matches. He went to England in 1952 and uh, to Pakistan in 1955. So that was an inspiration as well to to take up uh, to the game of cricket. My early heroes uh, were uh, M L Jaisima. um from uh, from hyderabad in india then conrad hunt i i watched a lot of his batting uh, wanted to bat like him he had this straightest of back lifts and uh, he had such terrific balance then of course um, there were uh, the heroes then kept on changing according to the teams that came to india uh, that time so if it was the the australian team that came in 1959 60 the norman anil was my hero 1960 when pakistan came hanif mohammed was my hero then they they i mean i admired their cricket watched uh, love to watch them play Gavaskar honed his batting skills and developed his technique from an early age. I did get uh, a lot of help from a lot of people uh, uh, but I think uh, the one major difference uh, to my career was uh, the coaching by TS Worthington at the All India Schools camp uh, which was held in Hyderabad. He he overhauled my technique completely. I was a front on player and uh, in the one month that i had uh, with him uh, which was an all india camp he made me made me go sideways on and he told me why sideways on is so important in cricket so uh, i think uh, his was a real major contribution after a successful start to his first class career gavaskar was selected for the 1970 71 tour of the west indies He produced the most prolific debut series by a batsman in history, scoring 774 runs at an average of 154.8. 1971 he came to the West Indies and this little fellow comes out and you can't get him out. And the people in the West Indies then of course after that series when he completely uh, got on top of the West Indies bowling they composed the Calypso now You compose calypsos about West Indian heroes and about great West Indian cricketers, not about someone from overseas. So that was a great honour for him, um, the calypso Gavaskar, the little master, um, and he was. And whenever the West Indies played against him, he he just seemed to to relish the challenge against the West Indies. I think he has more hundreds against the West Indies than anyone else, and uh, he was so difficult to dislodge. Um, tremendous technique, tremendous concentration, just to keep on going, keep on going, even against. fast bowling which is coming at him all the time after his remarkable performances helped india to its first ever series win against the west indies gavaskar returned home a conquering hero gavaskar returned to india after that west indies series an absolute hero i mean india had won in the west indies as far as uh, indian cricket fans were concerned um, a new star had emerged and this was reinforced when the team then went to england in 1971 and won a series there um and so, suddenly the indian cricketers were celebrities and gavaskar as the young emerging hero was um was one of the stars of the show if he'd become a hero at home gavaskar had yet to win universal acclaim overseas after his impressive debut series he struggled for a few years Then in April 1976 sunil gavaskar played a pivotal role in a famous indian victory The West Indies had set the Indians 403 to win the third test at Port of Spain. Gavaskar made 102 and India won by 6 wickets. I think if you're looking for one word to sum up Gavaskar it would be undaunted. He was never cowed by the great fast bowlers of his era, the West Indians or Lillian Thompson. He was never bothered at all by something that gets to most players which is the the um, the daunting fourth innings target it's very very rare in test history that a big target gets chased successfully in the fourth innings and one of the very few teams to have chased 400 successfully is the indian team of the mid 70s in the west indies a really hard place to chase anything and uh, they were set 404 or something and they got them and gavaskar got yet another of his hundreds against west indies it was as if the idea that this was a mountain to climb in the fourth innings just didn't bother him at all after becoming the first indian batsman to score 4000 test runs gavaskar embarked on his third tour of england in 1979 in the fourth and final test at the oval gavaskar scored his brilliant 221 almost snatching a remarkable victory for india uh, india were set a colossal target 
430, 440 odd, and they got very, very close to it. And Gavaskar scored 221. And the, the fact that it was the fourth innings and that this was, by all precedents, basically impossible, didn't bother him. If you have people like Sunil Gavaskar in your team, you can really chase a target of 400 in the second innings, which you know uh, is kind of impossible in Test match cricket because of the wear and tear on the pitch. It's very, very difficult. But the concentration this man had, he could score any kinds of runs in any kind of conditions. And I think uh, this is why this was the second time you know he went close to the target of 400, got 100 in the first one, got 221 in the second. In 1980, Gavaskar spent the summer playing for Somerset in English county cricket. Also in the side were Viv Richards, Joel Garner and Ian Botham. Uh, I played with him of course at Somerset for a year, I played a lot of test cricket against him. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed his company, uh, very generous, very warm person, um, but uh, a magnificent player. He was low centre of gravity, he had great balance and if he played a bad shot or what he thought was a bad shot, uh, you'd suddenly see him put the bat, lean the bat against the stumps or drop it, and he'd do this down the wicket. And he'd just look and look. And I asked him one day, I said, what are you doing, So He said, yeah, he's refocusing. I'm refocusing, and that, that was wrong, I'm refocusing. And he just used to shut everything out, and then just go back. But he was a great time with the ball, could work it either side of the wicket. Um, well balanced, he had everything. make it 9,000. There it is, that's his 9,000th run. In the 80s, Gavaskar rewrote record after record. He became the first man to play 100 tests and 200 innings, and the first man to pass 9,000 and then 10,000 test runs. He made us all proud. I mean, uh, the little man, uh, an opener from India, who's never faced fast bowlers. We don't have pitches in India, you know, uh, which are conducive to fast bowling. And he goes and scores runs against Dennis Lillies and Malcolm Marshalls and Andy Roberts with so much of ease. I mean, he did us all proud. The highest run getter in uh, the history of Test cricket at that time when he scored those 10,000 runs. And opening the innings and facing the best bowlers in the world. What, what I used to do to practice against uh, the, the quicker bowlers was ask the uh, Mumbai bowlers, uh, Mumbai new ball bowlers to bowl from say about 18 yards instead of the regulation 22 yards. So that made it a little bit quicker and occasionally have had them uh, bowl with the ball on concrete as well. Again, where the, there was a bit more bounce in it. So that's the way uh, I tried to practice against uh, the, the quicker bowlers. Cut down the distance so the ball would come at you quicker and try to get some practice. Otherwise, you know, you had somebody bowling at you in the nets uh, from about 16 yards, just just standing up and bowling, not running up and bowling. But uh, again, that would that, that that way the ball would come at you quicker, would bounce at you quicker. It got you some practice. It wasn't always enough, but at least it got got your reflexes uh, into some sort of motion. Straight drive from Gavaskar. He's played that shot a few times. I think his his best shot was a straight drive down the ground of the fast bowlers. He got into such great position. He would go back and across against the quickest and then uh, just wait for them to pitch the ball up and he would offer the full face of the blade and just punch it down the ground between the mid-on and the bowler. It was an outstanding shot. He played it against all the great fast bowlers. After winning the 1983 World Cup, Indian hopes were high for the home series against the West Indians in the 1983-84 season. It was a series in which the Indian side struggled against the devastating Caribbean pace attack, all except Gavaskar. In the second test of the series, he equaled Don Bradman's mark of 29 test centuries with a devastating 100 from 94 balls. What a great innings that was. I was fortunate to be in that team. I was playing that test match and what an innings that was. I think he had decided the previous night that he is not going to duck anymore. He's not going to, you know, sway away anymore. He's just going to play all his shots, whatever he's got. And he just hooked uh, everybody, Andy Roberts, Michael Holding, Malcolm Marshall with so much of ease. I mean, that hundred, I think that was one of the best hundreds, most aggressive hundreds I've seen from Sunil Gavaskar. In the final test of the series, Gavaskar broke Bradman's record, compiling a stylish 236 not out. I think that was a great knock again. He 
scored a 236 not out and the best part was that before he went into bat I was just sitting beside him and he just told me that today is the day I have to go, I've got to show my mettle I've, I'll have to concentrate harder and he just scored 236 runs and I just kept sitting there amazed that this man already planned what he was going to do and he planned it so quickly and went and achieved it that was his greatness that was his quality well, he played straight. That was the important thing about Sunuga Vasca. He had a perfect technique. He played straight. He was not one to hook, hardly ever hooked, especially early in his innings. Not one to cut too much either, especially early in, in his innings. And he, well, they say so all great batsmen have good eyes. You know, they picked up the line and the length of the ball that quickly. But his technique was the important thing. Very good technique. Gavaska, to me, was probably as the best player, technically, I've seen in probably the last well, since my retirement, I'll be quite honest about that. Um, I saw Sonal Gavasco play for, I think it was the rest of the world, uh, or he might have even played for, it was a special match at Lords. And all I can remember is Malcolm Marshall bowled to all the different, you know, like to different people. And Malcolm made a mess of everybody. And Sonal Gavasco didn't do anything else but play him every ball. I, I can't remember a ball getting past him. And I thought, Goodness gracious, that was enormous. And have a look at his record in the West Indies against the West Indies when they had the pace bikes and, uh, and, his, and his averages and, his, and the runs he scored. Uh, just They really exemplify a player that has got enormous ability, but obviously if you, if you have got any weaknesses at all in technique, pace bowling will always find it out. One thing about this little, little master I would like to tell you is that the more the challenge, the better he would perform. Now scoring runs against the West Indies would mean the world. Four best fast bowlers in the world were in the West Indian team when Sunil Gavaskar was playing. So scoring runs against them meant a lot to him. And that's one reason I feel why he could score so many runs against them was that there was more challenge, you know, that, uh, that facing four fast bowlers, there's no time to breathe, was there. So that is, that is the reason why he scored so many runs against the West Indies. Gavaska is not out for 166. A great innings by a truly great player, a legend in his own lifetime, Sonny Gavaska. In the final years of his career, Gavaskar's appetite for runs was as insatiable as ever. In cricket's second ever tied test in 1986, he made 90 in the second innings to set the scene for the dramatic final hour. Gavaska's contribution to the, tide, the second tied test in Madras in 1986 was colossal in that coming into the last day, Australia led by 347 at stumps. And Alan Border made the decision to declare and set India 348 to win. A lot of runs to score on the fifth day of a test. And India then made the decision to go after those runs and Gavaska came out and scored 90 and built the platform. Um, it's one of those situations where if Gavaska hadn't come out and played that innings and set that platform, the tide test would never have occurred. India failed to make the finals of the 1987 World Cup and Gavaskar retired. He has continued to provide Indian cricket with his services, going on to become a successful media commentator and taking a role in the game as a respected administrator. Indian cricket has had great players and players who did well for their country but didn't do much after that. Sunil so Gavaskar always was an intelligent man, he was very articulate and um, there was more to him than just a batsman and we knew it even when he was playing for India there was more to it. Even when he was in his last days of his international cricket, I remember actually hearing this and you know, I was just sitting as a youngster nearby hanging on to every word he said and he said that after retiring I would like to be the voice of Indian cricket. Just like Tony Kozia is the voice of West Indian cricket, I would like to be the voice of the Indian cricket. Gavaskar left behind a legacy that was to lay the platform for the great Indian batsman who would follow. His correctness of technique, his determination and his consistency changed the way Indian cricket was perceived at home and abroad. When Sunil Gavaskar came into the Indian team and started scoring runs against the West Indies, before that everybody used to say that you know, Indians are not very good against uh, the quicker stuff and they can't score runs as consistently as other batsmen in the world. But I think Sunil Gavaskar showed it to the world that, you know, there are Indians who can really face fast bowling very well. And after that, we had quite a few. I mean, uh, 
जी आर विश्वनाथ दिलीप वेंग सर का मोहिंदर अमरनाथ श्रीकांत रवि शास्त्री आई थिंक एवरीबडी फेस फास्ट बॉलिंग ब्रिलियंटली इट वॉज जस्ट दैट समबडी हैड टू शो द वे एंड आई थिंक इट वॉज सुनील गावस को शो आर बैट्समैन हाउ टू फेस फास्ट बॉलिंग we try and involve uh sunny as much as we can i i think that's so important because uh you know he's a great role model um he's passionate about indian cricket um and you know i think it's important that that we learn off um you know our elders and and people that have been great players they've got so much to offer so the players look up to him uh, he's he's respected and they listen to his advice you know for someone like uh, das to talk to to Gavaska I mean what an opportunity Ramesh Das talking to someone like Sunil one of the nicest things about Sunil is that he's also heavily involved now on the administrative side of the ICC on a couple of committees um captains committees and things like that and I think it's it's marvelous to see somebody like Sunil putting something back into the game Sunil Gavaska played in 125 test matches He made 10,122 runs at an average of 51.12. His 34 test centuries remains the world record. He was the first man to make 10,000 test runs, the first to make 30 centuries, the first to play 100 tests, and the first Indian to take 100 catches. With opening batsmen, their averages you normally have to add about five to get to get a realistic view because it's. people always talk about how you you should average 40 or 45 to be a good test match batsman well it's a lot easier to average 40 or 45 going in at number 5 when the new ball has been seen off than it is going in at the top of the order and gavaskar always went in at the top of the order so to his already formidable test average you should add a few more what tendulkar is today to this generation gavaskar was to our generation he was the role model the ideal cricketer to sort of idolize and model yourself on a lot of indian batsmen who came at the highest level but weren't good against fast bowling sunil gavaskar changed all that he just concentrating on being a good batsman against the quickest bowlers he was a master at choosing the right ball to hit and if the right ball wouldn't come he could wait for days for the loose ball to come a tremendous patience temperament technique and all in a beautiful package Like Alan Border for Australia, Gavaskar often stood between India and defeat. Before him, consistency was not the watchword for Indian batting. His technique and his tenacity paved the way for future stars like Azruddin, Tendulkar, Dravid and Laxman and increased worldwide regard for Indian batsmanship. And so Sunil Gavaskar joins the ranks of ESPN's Legends of Cricket.